Dungeons and Dragons The Dark Alliance was supposed to be the game that finally allowed, well not supposed to be because it actually did, but it was the game that would finally allow the gamers to experience the, the world of the Forgotten Realms in the hands of the, some, some of the most beloved heroes in the franchise. Drees the Orden, Ruinor, Wolfgar, Katie Breyer. And this had like quite some huge expectations in the sense that there's many of us that grew up reading these novels, reading uh, Mr. Salvatore's work, and those, they are amazing novels too. They are amazing pieces of literature. And I, I just, I, I don't know, dude, it, it pains me to, to say that, uh, to talk about all of the uh, things that happened to, to the game, to. Uh, well, let's just talk about it, right? Let's talk about what the hell happened with this game. Let's start with some context about the people behind Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. The game was developed by 2K Games, a studio based in Montreal, founded by Jeff Hatton, a former veteran from Ubisoft and Behavior Interactive. Their very first game developed was Lifelock, a top-down action RPG based in a sci-fi universe. While the studio was certainly a small one, it had a bunch of talents and veterans that had previously worked on things like Mad Max, Fury Road, Elysium for the art direction, and the narrative was written by none other than the author of the bestseller Robocalypse. Despite Lifelock having such a high pedigree on the development team side, the game ended up releasing with an average review rate from the critics of the gaming world. Now if you like for my personal opinion, I like the game. It's a very solid debut title for a recently founded rookie company. Just after Livelock released into the market, the company director Jeff Hatton approached the people at Wizards of the Coast in hopes of obtaining a partnership to let them develop a Dungeons and Dragons game, since Hatton himself stated in various interviews that he's a huge fan of R.A. Salvatore's work and just over the DID world. He wanted to make a game, uh, make something using this his take on the Forgotten Realms. Unfortunately, Hatem got a big no from Wizards of the Coast. Not willing to give up, he said, you know, fuck it, we're gonna make this thing. So he, he and his studio of 15 people started to develop their Dungeons and Dragons game at full production without even having rights, permission, nor partnership for it. Naturally, when you want to make a game, you have to present your pitch to the investors, right? You have to present uh, the idea to come to them and, and say, hey, dude, I want to develop the game. This is what I have. And, dude, they took it onto themselves to actually develop the game from the very ground up. Uh, as if they were actually working in the game without any kind of investors or, or anything like that and, and still uh, be, be bold enough to say, you know, fuck it, let's just make the game and if they like it, they're going to fund us. And if not, well, at least we tried, but they were wasting resources on that, dude. The original pitch presented to Wizards of the Coast was rejected like two times, my memory serves me well. It is only natural to, th to see it rejected because at the end of the day when they see uh, a, a failure or a major success most of the people won't be looking to the original company that developed the thing it will be laying their eyes onto Wizards of the Coast and since they are in Apogee with the 5th edition of the tabletop game it is only natural that they uh, look for, for the best uh, talents that can make the, the, the game that, that pardon me for that that can make the IP, the name, bigger. That's the case for Baldur's Gate 3 that's being developed by Larian Studios. I mean, it's it's in hand of Larian Studios. It's in hand, hands of, the, of some titans of the industry, of the gaming industry. And there has been some quite huge dry age. When we talk about uh, cult classics and video games and titans, golden titans of video gaming, of the video gaming world. Like I always mention, you know, you have to live on the, when you make a game of the Dungeons and Dragons setting, you have to live under the shadow of Neverwinter Nights, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate. Uh, this one, it's a little bit more of a cult classic, but the real Dark Alliance was just a solid game to play. In a game that many of us remember so fondly, and, I, and that's still played to, to the day. So, it's it's just, all of this is just so damn sad, dude. 
Sadly, yet again, even when they had already started the full game development and presented it as a pitch to the people at Wizards of the Coast, they still didn't get a green light for the development of the game, but this time, 2K Games started to gather a whole lot of attention from investors and people wanting to publish the game with them. This is where things started to go sour. Wizards of the Coast approached 2K Games and said that they had green light for development of their DID game, however, they had to go bigger than the original pitch they had. Wizards of the Coast was going to provide a bigger budget and they were going to be the ones publishing the game in partnership with 2K. The studio started to grow to meet the demands of making a bigger and better game than the one they, uh, they originally had in vision, and this in my opinion is what caused the demise of the game because they already had some foundation, some previous foundation of what they wanted to make, what they were capable of making that already had a game based on this. Life lock again. The original idea was to make a top down action RPG that was supposed to be a reboot of the original and classic Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. With the studio growth and bigger budget and the demands of making a bigger and better game came the pressure. They already had developed a top down action RPG that was pretty solid, like I mentioned. They already had experience and the original idea of what they were able to accomplish. With this bigger budget and the promise of making a better game, the development changed direction into being a third camera angle game. Jeff Hatem wanted to make a more personal experience and for players to experience the world of the Forgotten Realms like never before. Yet, while the intention was placed in the right direction, the management of the theme, it ended up in what we know right now as Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, with all of the problems that it has. Lack of experience and direction ended up showing in the final product they delivered into the market. 2K Games had the budget and the complete backup from Wizards of the Coast and still the final product wasn't of the quality expected of a fairly big title like this one. The first problem came with the third person camera angle perspective. The original Dark Lions, like previously mentioned, was a top down action RPG and fairly beloved by fans for that matter. The choice of changing a core element of an already established gameplay element was rather a bold one and while it was the first thing that fans weren't so happy about it, it was just the beginning of the problems. The game was advertised and handled poorly based on the public statements of the company. They were vague and ambiguous and not really letting the fans know what they were building that left room to so much speculation. One of these statements being the following. According to a press release, Dark Alliance quote combines the pulse pounding action of a hack and slash dungeon crawler with the progression and loot system of a role playing game, all from a third person perspective. In theory, it should feel much faster than a Dragon Age game, end of quote. That while they did stated that the game was supposed to have a fast paced combat system, the comparison to Dragon Age still leaves the interpretation open enough for players to think that it was still going to be highly based on the classic DID RPG formula, in my opinion. Just saying that the game was going to be a looter hack and slash from the very beginning would have saved lots of deceptions. The second fan deception came with the very first gameplay showcase that showed them what it was going to be like. The final deception happened when the game finally released and showing the lack of experience and expertise the company had in making the game of this scope. Average graphical presentation, poor handle of the combat system, terrible audio management and other issues you can find in my review of the game. Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance was supposed to be the game to finally take some of the most beloved heroes in the Forgotten Realms and place them in the hands of players and many people that grew up with Salvatore's nobles. Unfortunately, 2K Games made so much mistakes in so many fronts and left the DID universe for gaming still quite dry. It remains in the hands of the final launch of Baldur's Gate 3 and other projects Wizards of the Coast has in the works to bring back the golden days of yore of the Dungeons and Dragons video game classics. Needless to say, well, you have out there the results, there's people out there enjoying it. I'm quite happy that there's people enjoying the game, I'm enjoying the game as well. But at the end of the day, just 2K two, two games I believe it is my personal opinion, it is, this is my bias and this is what I think, but I believe that they should have stayed to the original pitch that they have with the top-down action RPG because that's where they had the experience, dude. Life Lock is an amazing game. Uh, it has some so much talent behind it and there was a whole bunch of talent behind this thing as well. And since you have that much talent behind it, if they would have taken a little bit of a little less risky path, make the game top-down action RPG, I think it wouldn't have that many troubles as this game did.
But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's talk all about Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance in the comments below. That being said, I'll see you beautiful, goddamn beautiful people. Don't you ever forget that each and every single one of you little people watching Mariel James, goddamn beautiful people. I'll see you later.